All right, hello everyone, and welcome back to Kodobo Space Program, where today we are having a look at the CSA Conteres Nom mod, which is yet another of the lovely packs being released by user Atraban. And what this glorious little piece of work looks to add into the game is a selection of parts to allow you to build American made NASA spacecraft as well as private industry launchers, all of which is pretty special. Sweet, so let's jump right on into the vehicle assembly building and have a look at what this does add. Now let's grab a Mark 1 command pod for size comparison's sake and then turn on our janitor's closet mod filter just leaving on Conteres NAM. And we'll start up here with the Sea Draken 2 command pod, which if we pop right on there is a pretty cool little command pod, which will hold up to five Kerbals, minimum of one to operate, and does have a built-in data transmitter and engine producing a max of 140 kilonewtons of thrust using monopropellant. Does also have RCS, Reaction Wheel, SAS, a crew report, electric charge, and monopropellant. All in all, a very fun and useful capsule. And I mean, come on, who doesn't like a capsule with its own engines to make sure you land safely? Hopefully. And then the next we have is the C. Orion, which despite having one less Kerbal in it, with a crew capacity of four... It's a lot bigger than the Sea Draken. Look at that baby. It is a uh, much larger command pod there. Does require at least one crew member to operate with the built-in data transmitter, RCS, reaction wheel, SAS, crew report, electric charge, and monopropellant, and is just a big, beautiful command pod. It is very well made. I do enjoy it. Now the next one we have, actually let's take a look at this one, the CST-101, which will hold a whopping six Kerbals, minimum of one crew member to operate, and is oddly also smaller than the Orion, but hey, that's uh, whew, going to be a really cramped ride in there. And does have a built-in data transmitter, a decoupler, RCS, reaction wheel, SAS, crew report, electric charge, and monopropellant. We then have the CP2SAS, which is the first of our unmanned command pods on here, and is more basically for like a suborbital rocket. Uh, we'll see with the rest of the parts we look at later. And of course, also does have though a built-in data transmitter, decoupler, reaction wheel, SAS, and electric charge. Now let's chuck all those away and move on to what are, quite frankly, my favorite parts in this entire mod. We have a beautiful selection of reusable launch vehicles, space planes, etc. The first of which being the CX-15, which is glorious. This is by far my favorite part in the entire mod. It is just beautiful. Now, as for its stats, this thing will hold one crew member, but it doesn't need them. It is unmanned, so you can do this thing radio controlled, but it does have a data transmitter. It is a lifting surface. It does have built-in RCS, reaction wheel, electric charge, liquid fuel, monopropellant, and oxidizer, and is just Oh, I love this thing. It is by far one of the most beautiful pieces I've seen in the various CSA Contarius mod packs. It is just that cool to me. Now let's pop that off though and hit the next one, which is the CX-37B reusable landing vehicle, which we'll pop down there and get a little zoom in. Another beautifully made little fella here, and this one though is fully unmanned with no crew capacity whatsoever. Does have a built-in ablator though, as well as data transmitter, lifting surface, RCS reaction wheel, electric charge and monopropellant, and also does have have a lovely little cargo bay for you to use to put in various experiments, and that is just a good thing. Now next, we have the Dream Crusher. Oh, it's great. And it's just, again, a beautiful, beautiful model. And uh, this thing is another unmanned vehicle. Uh, does have a built-in ablator, no crew capacity whatsoever, but does have a data transmitter, lifting surface, RCS, reaction wheel. Does have a resource converter, turning monopropellant into electric charge. And of course, a crew report, which is awkward considering it has zero crew capacity. 
which I don't know why it has the crew report then, but does also hold electric charge and monopropellant. Now this thing is sort of a, I get, well actually as it shows here, sort of a cargo space plane. And what we then have, besides this Dream Crusher, is another Dream Crusher. This one though does actually hold crew members, will hold up to six of them, and does require one minimum to operate. So this one is piloted. It does have a built-in ablator, data transmitter, lifting surface, RCS, reaction wheel, that same fuel converter turning monopropellant into electric charge, a crew report that actually makes sense this time, electric charge and monopropellant. And one thing both of them share, whether it's this cargo version or a crew version, is retractable wings. There we go. Look at it dance. That is just fun. And, you know, great for storage on, you know, wherever you put these things. Very cool indeed. Now, next we have again two different versions of the same plane. We first have the X-20. Oh, uh, yay, a beautiful new version of the dinosaur, which is one of my favorite space planes. And of course, this one holds three crew members, minimum of one to operate, does have an ablator, data transmitter, an engine producing 40 kilonewtons of thrust using liquidy fuel and oxidizer, is a lifting surface, has RCS reaction wheel crew report, electric charge, liquid fuel, monopropellant, and oxidizer, and all in all is just a gorgeous little aircraft. And then we have finally the X-20 Z-I-V-I-L there we are which is just really a different colored version really of the last one now this one also holds three crew members minimum of one to operate has that ablator data transmitter same engine of 40 kilonewtons with liquid fuel and oxidizer lifting surface RCS reaction wheel crew report electric charge liquid fuel monopropellant Oxidizer. Basically identical to this one, just, you know, white. That's really it. Now on to the fuel tanks category where we have two different service modules, both for, actually I'll pop that one on, the Sea Draken, and uh, just of two different sizes. We have sort of a short model and then a taller model, and they have electric charge, both holding 600, and also both being hollow. So, you know, you can put a lot of things in there, a lot of fun experiments or engines or who knows what, really whatever you like. We then have a very long Falk X LFO stage one holding liquid fuel oxidizer and monopropellant and is just a giant fuel tank. Yeah. There we go, big ol' fuel tank. We then have a smaller Falk X liquid fuel and oxidizer stage two holding just liquid fuel and oxidizer. There it is right there. Uh, we then have the Globus 5S1 holding a lot of liquid fuel and oxidizer and not being radially attachable, so there we go, does fit quite nicely onto that attachment point. We then also have the Globus 5S2150 holding liquid fuel and oxidizer. This one kind of attached radially, but kind of awkwardly. Hmm. Well, let's just pop it there because it's easier. And then also the Globus 5S2187, just a slightly larger version, holding more liquid fuel and oxidizer. We then have the Kappa 5 Stage 1 tank holding a lot of liquid fuel and oxidizer. Oh boy, look at the size of this thing. Oh, I don't really have enough room for it. There we go, and it's going way into the floor. It's a really, really big tank. Let's scroll up. There we go. That's that's it. That's just a gigantic freaking tank there. Who wouldn't love it? And then finally, in the fuel tank category, we have the Kappa 5 Stage 2 tank holding liquid fuel and oxidizer, and it's one of those more unique style tanks that I quite like the look of. Now next in the engine category, we have the CAJ-60A solid rocket booster for the Globus doing 277 kilonewtons of maximum thrust with solid fuel and is just a beautifully radially attached solid rocket booster. We then have the Seacaster 120, another solid rocket booster but producing 200 kilonewtons of thrust. There we are. We then have the CP-2 for 
first solid stage, which is just a tiny, tiny little uh, solid rocket engine, and also the CP2 second stage rocket. Uh, again, for that CP2 command pod we saw earlier. Now, the first stage has 28.75 kilonewtons of thrust, and the second stage has 22 kilonewtons of thrust. Very nice, lovely pieces. We then have a big CSRS Cuplo launch escape system. There we go for your launch escaping needs. And then, if we pop that away, the CST-101 service module, which is a beautiful little thing. Love the engines in there. And, of course, has a uh, engine with 220 max kilonewtons of thrust with liquid fuel and oxidizer. Has built-in RCS, a monopropellant to electric charge resource converter, and then also a battery of uh, electric charge, liquid fuel, monopropellant, and oxidizer. All the resources you need. We then have the RK. K068S, which is an engine of 785 kilonewtons of thrust with liquid fuel and oxidizer. It is a pretty powerful engine there and beautiful looking. We then have the RK0RL10 doing 55 kilonewtons of thrust with liquid fuel and oxidizer. A very simplistic engine there. We then have uh, this, the RK1M1DS X9, which does, oh boy, a whopping... 1,266 kilonewtons of thrust with liquid fuel and oxidizer. Though it can be, you know, switched over to 422 kilonewtons of thrust also using liquid fuel and oxidizer. Or 211 kilonewtons of thrust using liquid fuel and oxidizer. And it's insane, but I mean, come on, who doesn't want it to just go straight up to the 1,266? That's beautiful and excessive, but wonderful. Then the RK-1 M1 DV with 233 kilonewtons of thrust with liquid fuel and oxidizer, a pretty beautiful looking engine there. And then the RK-U 180 with 1,040 kilonewtons of thrust with liquid fuel and oxidizer. A lot of kilonewtons there. Good times. Now we have nothing in command and control. We have one thing in structural, an engine mount plate with uh, three attachment points at the bottom. Very nice to have. We then and have in coupling a number of things the C Orion fairing which is just a lovely decoupler there a C Orion parachute protection which is again another decoupler right there we then have the CP2 S1D decoupler right oh, can't actually put it there down there nice tiny little decoupler we then have the let's actually pop these off here the CST 101 docking node protector again a nice lovely little decoupler and then the CST 101 parachute protector decoupler excellent then of course the cxd 20 decoupler to uh, attach the your larger rockets to one of the x20s here very fun we then have the globus decoupler 1.5 meter to 1.875 meter nice converter and then a globus decoupler 1.5 to 2.2 Two. There we are. All lovely pieces. Payload, nothing. Aerodynamics, we got a couple of nose cones. One for the CP2 nose cone. We then also have the Falk X aerodynamic nose cone. A lovely thing. We then have the N1250C aerodynamic nose cone with a separator. A little solid rocket booster engine right there with 16 kilonewtons of thrust to move away your stack. And and then the Space Sea Grid Fin. There we go. We can deploy that right nicely there. Very fun. Now, in ground, we have two things. The Contarius CX Skid, which is, you know, just a nice extendable sort of ski skid thing. And then the Falk X Leg. There we go. Just extend that nicely. Perfect. And get those out of here. Perfect. Excellent. Then we have a couple of heat shields. The Sea Draken heat shield. The Sea Orion heat shield, which is a little bit bigger. And then the CST-101 heat shield, which is back to being a little bit smaller. All beautiful designs, though. Then in electrical, we have one singular solar panel for the CX-37B. If we pop that on there, not only does it extend, but it rotates. And I like that. I don't know why, but I, I like not just the extension, but the rotation. It amuses me. There we go. Now, nothing in communication. In science, we do have the payload for the CP2. There it is. And finally, in utility, we have the Draken 2 upper node, which pops on there and opens up. 
There we go, a little clamshell opening thing. Perfect! And that is all of the parts for the CSA Contreras NOM mod. And this thing is pretty awesome. So let's take a look at just two quick crafts that I sort of uh, put together haphazardly just to show these things off. And the first, if I can find it in here, there we go, an X20 that we are going to stupidly and irresponsibly launch with the powerful RK1 M1DS X9. Oh my god, this thing is so powerful, and launching this light of a payload is frankly stupid. But let's do it, because hey, that's what I do. And yes, we have this lovely space plane. I always did love the design of the dinosaur, so seeing another take on it here in Kerbal Space Program is always fun. So let's turn on the SAS, which becomes useful with how or useless, rather, with how powerful this thing is. So let's um let's throttle up to 100 percent and see what happens. Launch! Oh yeah, listen to that roar. <laughs> And, yep, SAS couldn't really hold that thing, even with the gimbling on these engines. It just was not enough. And let's wait for it to burn out, because, I mean, why not? And we'll release it, and then try and glide with the X-20. There we go. Power that off. And, actually, we do have an engine on this thing. Not doing much. Only, uh, I think it was, ooh, I don't remember, actually. I think 40 kilonewtons, something like that. But still, a beautiful little internal engine for ourselves. which, I mean, come on, who doesn't like that? So we can come and to a landing with this thing if you, you know, flew better than me, which means this isn't going to happen. So let's actually head quickly back to the vehicle assembly building just to take a look at one other thing, because... Well, like I said, the CX-15 is my favorite part in this entire mod, and I slapped an engine onto it. So let's go launch this baby, because it's just so majestic. I really, really do love this thing. Now, one thing I wish this mod had was more American space station parts, like Skylab or something would be awesome. But, oh well, you know what? I get this beautiful thing. And there we go. Not exactly the most powerful engine for this, but it flies perfectly fine. So let's just get a nice shot of this baby. And that, oh yeah, that uh, that's gonna be the image for the uh, thumbnail. Wonderful. And yeah, it's it's overall a great mod with a lot of amazing parts. Like I said, I do wish it had some space station parts, but it's got some great launch systems, a lot of good fuel tanks and engines for you to use in any number of projects that you may be working on. And I mean, come on, who wouldn't love having one of these? It's just great. Cool. So if you'd like to take a look at this mod for yourself, you can take a look at the link in the description as usual. And I would definitely suggest that you go and download it as it is just great. Uh, but that is going to be all for today. I hope you all have enjoyed. And of course that you do come back for the next when we'll be looking at yet another wonderful mod. And I think actually we only have one or two more of these CSA Contreras mods to look at. So we should be moving on to other things soon enough. But until then, my friends, thank you for watching, and as always, have a good one!